On the last episode of Admiral Bumblebee Pisses Off the Internet, I tried to show you how DAW fader automation worked. And unfortunately, some people thought I was just trying to show you how to mute audio. And that's not really what I was trying to do. I should have communicated better. I'm sorry. I will do better in the future. But in this video, I'm going to show you some more about DAW fader automation smoothing and transition times. How you can make things better, some myths, and how you can make things worse. So let's start from the worst all the way down to the best. Last time we found what appeared to be a bug in Studio One 4.50. And PreSonus responded within three days with a new update. It seems like they're using some sort of low pass filter on the automation or some multi-step smoothing due to these little ripples that you can see here. And there's something else that we should really look at here. Look what happens when we just do a normal fade. I drew a linear automation over 1600 samples and instead I got this weird step thing with all sorts of little wobblies. Uh, they fixed the automation but then they broke it again. I mean this is actually quite audible. You can hear it with any sort of fade that's not straight to zero. So who is testing this stuff at PreSonus? I don't understand. Some FL Studio users suggested that nobody automates the fader, so why would you do that? So instead, I should use the channel volume. That's no different. Or instead use Fruity Balance, which is quite a bit better, but it's still not doing what it shows you. It was suggested that maybe I should use a VST plugin in Bitwig Studio, and that's a different video. However, if you use the Tool plugin or any native plugins in Bitwig Studio, you still get the same mess as you got with the volume fader. If you need fast transition time for volume automation in our door, then make sure you use the clip gain, not the fader automation. The fader automation is slow, the clip gain is really fast. But the fader automation still shows you that it can do it fast even though it doesn't. As a side note, the Ardour and Mixbus developers both contacted me, were super friendly and were willing to discuss the problem and potential solutions for this. So good for them. They responded better than absolutely anybody else, and they're great people. In the last video, for Logic, I used the default settings, which is to have sample accurate automation set to volume, pan, sends, and plugin parameters. What happens if you turn this off, though? Well, firstly, this is a lot worse than it looks. Normally, I use a 1600 sample window with 800 samples on each side. In order to actually show this, I had to use a 6400 sample window with 3200 samples on each side. So there's a 12 and a half millisecond fade with this option turned off compared to five milliseconds when it's turned on. And the automation is almost 100 milliseconds away from where it should be. That is a really, really big deal. You can absolutely hear it and you should make sure that setting is on. It should be on by default. It should not even be a setting. For waveform, I have nothing. This is how I created the automation for the test in Cubase. And when you do this, it automatically creates a transition for you. But you can change where these automation points are. So does that affect anything? And the big reveal is, there's no difference. It is nice that Cubase puts the automation points where the transitions should be, but it allows you to do things that it doesn't render. So it's kind of good, kind of bad, kind of, you yeah. know. There's nothing really to add about Ableton Live, except it still shows you that it can break the laws of physics, even though it can't. Digital Performer is mostly fine. I couldn't figure out anything cool about it. Sorry, guys. Reaper has a setting that allows you to change the transition time for newly created edge points. And this definitely makes a big difference if you set it to a small value. A nice thing is that this setting only affects newly created automation points. So we can create some automation points when the setting is at 100 milliseconds, and then we can confirm that this is a 100 millisecond fade, and then zoom back out and go back to preferences, set this to a tenth of a millisecond, and then create a new automation jump, and we can see that this is a tenth of a millisecond fade, but our old 100 millisecond fade is still intact. Pro Tools limits how close two automation points can be to what the transition time is. That is a perfectly fine implementation because you see something and then you get it when you render your project. <clears throat> hey there, hopefully I've given you some insight into how automation works in various DAWs as of today's date. And hopefully you understand that there are workarounds and you can do things like just edit the audio clip and not mess with automation at all. But 
that doesn't tell you anything about how the automation works. And that's what I'm interested in. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate everybody that commented around the internet, especially the people that did their own tests and learned some new things for themselves. And I hope that you guys tell me more things because I love investigating this. Even if I'm wrong, even if I'm right, I don't care. I think this is just really interesting. So AdmiralMumblebee.com where you can find a text companion article for these videos, like always, and Patreon.com slash AdmiralMumblebee because this stuff is expensive and it takes a lot of time. So have a good day. And if you see something cool, tell me about it. If you see something that sucks, tell me about it. If I suck, tell me about it. Have a good day.